Bing. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to the Burns Memorial Church of God in Christ Sunday morning service. We just welcome you here today, just thanking God for another day that he has made. You know, I always like to start out with a song, and I know I'm not a songster, and some might not appreciate, <laughs> you know, my melodious tone, <laughs> but I'm going to sing my song anyway. I will make the darkness light before thee. What is wrong, I'll make it right before thee. All your battles I will fight before thee and the high places I bring down. God said, I will make the darkness light before thee. What is wrong, I'll make it right before thee. All your battles I will fight before thee. And the high places I bring down. I was just thinking about my grandma, Wilhelmina Burns, and she would sing that song. And the words just still resonate. When God said, I'll make the darkness light before thee. In other words, I'm, he says, I'm just going to switch it up for you. You know, everything's been gloomy. Everything's been depressing. Everything's been weighted on you. And God said, I'll just switch it. You know, and he said, what's wrong? I'm going to make it right before thee. That word before thee is leading into the message that I want to preach today. All right. I want to talk this morning about the walk, the walk. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you and we praise you and we magnify your name, Lord. Lord, we just declare your word this morning and we declare what you have said about it, that it will not return void, but that the hearers will receive the word, Lord, even the giver will receive the word, Lord, and it will just go all in the bone and marrow and change everything, change the atmosphere of their life, Lord. And we give you praise this morning. We give you glory as I decrease and you increase. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning, I just want to, you know, give honor to the Spirit of the Lord and give honor to, you know, all those that are on the Lord's side this morning. We want to come from, I have a few scriptures I want to come from, and I want to start out with Joshua, the first chapter, and the third verse. And it says, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, God said, I'll give to you. Then I'm going to go to Hebrews 5. Let's go on over to Hebrews 11 and 5. And it reads, by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. All right. And then there's a scripture, 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says, we walk by faith, not by sight. I want to talk about the walk this morning. When you read the book of Joshua, you know Joshua was the one who preceded Moses. And God took, you know, was telling Joshua that, listen, you saw all the things that I did for Moses. You saw how I was with Moses. All right? And he says, I'm going to be with you. All right? I'm going to be just like I was with Moses. I'll be with you. And then he told him, he says, Joshua, every place you place your foot is yours. And I started thinking about that because I says, you know, 
God is telling this man that, you know, listen, wherever you go and your foot tread upon, I'm going to give it to you. And I said, that's a whole lot of leeway to give somebody, you know, because he could have walked any place. He could have went any place. So we think. But the Bible says we walk by faith, not by sight. And God had already seen that Joshua was a man of faith. God had already seen that he, you know, he went in with the 12 spies and he was one of the ones that believed God and believed that he could conquer anything, you know, with God. So God could entrust him and entrust his footsteps. Anytime that we are operating in faith, you got to understand that faith is a spirit. God says, I've given to every man a measure of faith. So God has literally given himself, put a measure of himself in every man. All right. So faith is a spirit because we know that God is a spirit. And we know that, Mo, that Joshua took on that spirit, got possessed by that spirit, all right, and was controlled by that spirit of faith. So God could say to him that wherever you place your feet, because wherever Joshua was going to go was going to be God, was going to be led by God, was going to be inspired by God, all right? The Bible goes on in Genesis and talks about, and, and we didn't read Genesis 5 and 25, chapter 5 and 24. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Enoch walked with God, and he was not. I, 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 I want to talk about that. The, we see that Enoch was the only one that was given the testimony that he was taken before death. He was translated. He had walked so close with God 365 years to the day, and God took him. Now, we can deal with that 365 because it takes 365 days in a year to make a complete lunar calendar year, all right? So God let him live 365 years to the exact day and took him. You know, that's deep. I can get into that. But, but the part that I want to deal with was his walk with God. He, he walked with God to the point that God translated him. He was not. Okay? That, that word, he was not, meaning like, and you know, I like to see that. He, he got so close to God. He followed God's ordinances. He worshiped God the way he was supposed to. He praised God the way he was supposed to. He operated in the things of God the way he was supposed to till he was not. In other words, he came out of himself in his walk. His daily walk was the things of God. He was led by God and his faith took him to a place where he literally was translated from this earth right into heaven, right into paradise. He, he literally couldn't even be here no more because his walk was so, close, was, was, was so close with God. In other words, he walked in the spirit, not in the flesh. His flesh became no more good for this earth because his spirit took him to a place where he left this earth. That walk, that walk. A lot of people think that walk is a, like, like, like a physical, you know, put one foot in front of the other, all right? And soon you'll be walking out the door. You know, they, 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 they see it that way, but that word walk literally means your whole being, all right, operating with kingdom agenda. Your whole self, all right? That's what that walk is. When you, the Bible says the, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. That word good means a faithful man. If you look it up in the Greek, that word good means 
the steps of a man of faith, the God kind of faith. All right? The, it, that God kind of faith, not, not, not the faith that man put on you, not belief in self, not belief in philosophy, not belief in, you know, the things, you know, of this world, you know, coming through for you. You know, a lot of some people say the universe is releasing things to me and, 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 and nature is doing this and all that. No, 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 no. What's being released when you operate with the God kind of faith is the windows of heaven are open, all right? And God is pouring out a blessing you can't receive. That blessing is the blessing of favor. The mindset of God. God releases uh, literally the mind, Jesus into you. All right, the mindset of Christ gets released into you, and then your steps become regimented. It, you can't help yourself where you go when you're operating in faith. You can't help yourself how your flow is when you're operating in faith. You know, people ask me, what made you do that? Why'd you go here? You know, because a lot of things that I've done in the last couple of years, you know, it, you know I've found out that that was God. I remember when I was in my worst situation and the decision that I was making was going to put me, you know, seem like in a worse situation. And people say, you are crazy. You need to do this and be done with that so you don't have to go through that. But I kept saying, no, God is telling me to do this. Even though I made the mistakes that I made to get myself in this situation, God is not telling me to take the easy road out. He's telling me to do this. And when I did that, I ended up in a situation that it seemed like it was destitute. But when I look back, had I not done that, I would not be where I am right now. I am exactly where God wanted me to be. But the decision I made, it took everything in me to make it because it went against my common sense. It went against my flesh. I want flesh always wants to preserve itself and protect itself. When that decision I made put my flesh in jeopardy, I literally could have lost my life with that decision. I literally could have lost my wife, my children, my everything with that decision. But I kept feeling like in my spirit that God wanted me to make that decision, which seemed to be ludicrous. But it turned out to be the right decision because if it had I not made it, I would have missed out on what God had in store for me later on, literally five years later almost. I would have lost out on it. So that's why it's important to walk by faith because we're making these decisions and we're operating, you know, in such a manner that seems like it's common sense. Everybody told me I was crazy. They was like, listen, you better go ahead and do this or you crazy. And even when I got in that situation, the people that were in it with me told me I was crazy for making that decision. They was like, I'll preach look at you. You right with us now. You know what I'm saying? And you talk about you made a decision of faith. Faith always looks crazy to the flesh because the flesh can't comprehend a faith walk. The flesh cannot understand when you sacrifice it for God, for the things of God. It can't understand that type of operation. Enoch walked with God. I can imagine everybody that was on earth with Enoch at that time did not understand him. Probably thought he was crazy. You understand? But my understanding is Enoch wrote so many books before he left. Enoch preached and prophesied so much stuff, even in time stuff, before he left. Do you understand? God gave Enoch what other people couldn't get because of the walk. All right? And a lot of people think that walk is, I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't fornicate. I don't lie, I don't do this. They think that's the walk when they don't understand that David was a scoundrel in the sense of the flesh. He committed adultery, he lied, he did all kinds of stuff. Abraham lied, 
Isaac, lie. You know, was a liar. Jacob was a liar and a trickster. But all of these men were men of faith. They walked by faith. So that means we got to understand the difference that the walk doesn't mean being so good in the flesh. The walk, what it means is surrendering and letting God, you know, flow through that sinful, willful, sinful flesh. Okay? We got to understand that that walk is a lifestyle. There was an old uh, bishop back in the days, and he would, he, would, he would sing a song. His name was Bishop Baby Bell. He used to come to the Burns Memorial Church when I was a kid, and he prophesied that I'd be a great man of God one day. He even prophesied I'd be a bishop one day. Still waiting for that to come, all right? But I believe him. It's going to happen. But he sung a song, this train is a clean train. This train, this train is a clean train, this train. And then we go on, on this train, there's no liars. <laughs> on this train, there's no this, you know. And he would talk about that, you know, that, that song, and it, it, and it still sticks with me today. But it's a lifestyle that you live, people of faith. Nobody's going to understand somebody of faith. You know, I'm one of the most... Misunderstood people I know. <laughs> you know, I, you know, nobody understands. They talk about me. They call me crazy. Uh, that, that, that's the other. But they don't understand that God has guided my footsteps. God has ordered my footsteps. And the crazy things that I do. Even I heard a bishop call me a trickster. He's a schemer. You know, he's going on to be with the Lord now. But he, 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 he spoke that about me. Because he couldn't understand how I was able to accomplish something that he couldn't accomplish. He tried and failed. And, you know, and it didn't work. And then I came in, so he, he, he felt like I, I got that because of my scheming. And he don't understand. I got it because I obeyed God. The enemy is put on hold and really already defeated and they don't even know it. But because I obeyed God, I stepped into this thing obeying God. My steps were ordered by my faith. Do you understand? The spirit of faith led me this way. You remember Ezekiel? Ezekiel said the, he, he was led by a man with a line out into some waters and it was to the ankle and then it was to the knee. He was led out further and it was to the waist. He was led out further, and then he couldn't even touch the ground. And then he asked God, what was that? And he was, he was letting him know those are the living waters that run from up under the temple of God. Those are the living waters. That's the spirit of God flowing. And, and, and you, you followed it, and it took you out into deep waters. Faith will always take you out into a place that you cannot control. Faith will always take you to depths of things. And people can't stand deep. They will sit with their feet in the water and splash around and, and just puddle around. And, but it takes somebody special. It takes somebody full of faith to go out into the deep where there's sharks and there's stingrays and there's all kind of you know mess out there. Unknown creatures. Sea creatures. It takes somebody full of the Holy Ghost. To step into waters like that. Because waters like that, you can't control what comes. But your faith will protect you in the midst of all of that. Your walk. Your faith walk. Do you not know you're more secure in what seems to be a risky lifestyle, which is walking, you know, on water, than you are sitting in your house closed in and everything else, you can go in the midst of wolves and they can't touch you. You can go in the midst of thieves and robbers and all of that. You can operate in the midst of this pandemic and COVID can't touch you. Do you know when you are full of faith and you're led by the Lord? Oh, David says, you know, the Lord is my shepherd. He said, but yea, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I fear no evil. That word fear means that his flesh feels scared, but the fear, no evil means I, 
I, I'm, I'm protected by God, and even, I know that evil cannot overtake me because greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is with me. You understand? With God be for you, who can be against you? Against you. So we got to understand this walk. This walk is, is a lifestyle. It's a flow. It's, it, it's, I'm willing to take risks every day for the Lord. I'm willing to step out every day for the Lord. I like Brother Peter, all right, because he was a mess, all right? He, he couldn't control his emotions and, and, and stuff like that. But when any time he would step out, he said, Lord, if it be you. Everybody else scared, thought it was a ghost. And he didn't even know whether it was a ghost or not. But he said, Lord, if it be you, bid me to come. You know, lead me to walk on water. I don't know about you, but I, I don't want to just be anybody in, in, in my walk with God. I, I ask God to let me end well. I'm not, I, you know, I've done a lot of mess in my younger days and, and, and all kind of stuff and got in all kind of trouble, right? But I said, Lord, let me end well because I see people not ending well. I want to end like Enoch. I want to walk with God all the way out of this earth. I want to trust God. You know, a lot of people, you know, they, they chase money and want money, 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 money. And, you know, and, and I've had times when I'm not broke. You know, and I'm not broke now, right? But, it, you know, money does not satisfy somebody of faith. What satisfies somebody of faith is actually accomplishing what God has already declared for them to accomplish. Do you not know that? So I don't want to, to, to end my life with a, with a bunch of money and, and not have walked what God has walked. But I found out if you walk by faith, God, he's a provider. Money's not going to be a problem. When you operate in the things of God, you know, none of that's going to be a problem. All right? You can lay hands on the sick. You can do this. You can do that. You can operate. Do you not know that the only way to accomplish what God has, has ordained for your life is for you to do it through faith. Hebrews go on to say, through faith, Abraham did this. Through faith, Noah. <laughs> Noah built, all right? He built a boat, a, a big boat, in a place where it never rained, there was no water, and it looked crazy. But after the boat was finished, they got in, closed the door, and the water carried that boat away. I hope I've admonished somebody this morning to stick in and, and to walk by faith and to work your faith and to, you know, operate in faith and trust where your faith leads you. That's another thing. A lot of people, you know, they're not trusting. They said, look where I'm going. You know, you know stop looking so much where you're going and look where you're at when you're walking by faith. You're in the midst right there with God. You're standing on sure foundation. You're standing on a rock. Praise the Lord. If you do not know the Lord in the pardon of your sins, the Bible said the word is nigh thee, even in your mouth, that if you confess Jesus, believe in your heart, that Jesus died for your sins and rose again for your justification, you are saved. So anybody right now in the sound of my voice that don't know God, receive him. Receive him right now in Jesus' name. I want to thank you all for all that, you know, all the giving that's been going on in, in, in our direction to the Burns Memorial Church. We have been utilizing it for the things of God. I am not one that wastes. All right, uh, I've been a uh, tribute. It was been attributed uh, to me that I'm one that can take a little and make a lot out of, and I do have that gift God has given me. So what you sow, we're doing great things for the kingdom with, and we thank you for it. Amen. So God bless y'all, and see you on Thursday nights at eight o'clock for Bible study. Amen. <laughs>